Welcome again. So we'll start here in this comfortable seated position and just kind of noticing what's going on with the tension in the shoulders or not, right? That'd be nice. <laughs> Although you probably wouldn't be here, would you? <laughs> You'd be off having coffee somewhere instead of doing some work for your shoulders. So let's go ahead and just plant the hands onto the legs. So when you put your hands on your knees, you'll notice that the elbows are straight and it's almost like you're kind of having to pull and hold yourself up, right? So now do this, slide your hands up the thighs and let the elbows drop. So you should feel like the elbows are just kind of supported in this sort of dangling position, right? So you're not all the way back there to where you're squeezing your shoulders. You're kind of in that halfway medium place where you can let the elbows dangle at your sides. And then we'll just tilt the head across. So take the, the left ear to the left shoulder and open and close the jaw a couple of times. So just open and close the mouth and just notice what's going on there on the side of the neck and invite breath into the right pec. So imagine kind of puffing breath into that right shoulder. And then let's rotate chin forward to your chest, round the back of the neck and let the heavy head dangle forward. Shoulders are still relaxed because elbows are soft at your sides. And then let's roll other ear, other shoulder again, just kind of taking note with what's going on in the side of the neck, opening and closing the jaw, noticing the tension of the jaw and the neck and how they play with each other. And then roll your chin forward once again, rounding the upper back, heavy head, and then we're going to stack the head up and over the spine. So slowly lift up, roll the shoulders back and see if you notice the difference in terms of the weight of the head. When you put the ears right over the shoulders, do you see how the head almost becomes buoyant? That heaviness of the head is distributed by the entire spine. Feel the lift in your chest. And then from here, let's place hands together at your heart center. Take the deepest breath you've had all day, breathing right into the throat. And from that place of awareness, take a moment to set your intention for practice today. Briskly rub the palms together to generate heat. Cup your hands over your eyes and inhale the warmth. All right, let's release the hands, open the eyes, climb into a hands and knees position, and let's meet in downward facing dog. Spreading fingers, tuck your toes, lift your hips and knees, straightening out the legs, and go ahead and nod and shake your head yes and no. So just drop tension in the head, neck, and shoulders as you nod and shake the head, and see if you notice what's going on there in the sides of the neck and shoulders. And then let's walk feet to hands, hands to feet, however it works best. And then bend your knees a lot. Let the head dangle forward. Both hands and feet still on the floor. Doesn't matter how much you have your knees bent, just enough so that you can keep your head dropping forward. And then really deep bend of the knees now. Hands to hips as you come up. Once again, slowly lifting the head up and over the spine. Noticing that balance of head right up and over the hips. Okay, so we're gonna get into this stretch that we're gonna uh, end up in after we do some rolling. So it's just gonna be like a moment of kind of comparison. Let's take that right foot forward and bend the right knee. Okay, now the right arm is gonna shoot straight up. So it's the same leg with the arm, right? So the whatever knee is bent, that arm's gonna go straight up into the air. Now you're gonna sweep the other arm straight back. So like kind of like this um, position where the arms are in a 90 degree angle. And then we'll go ahead and bend this back arm and reach it around. See if you can grab onto the flesh of the other arm. And now we're gonna gaze over the, the shoulder. So you're going to be looking across the room, the, the same direction that knee is bending. And I want you to press that arm, that right arm down. So keep your hand hooked and press it down. 
So remember what I said before, like don't overdo it. If this is as far as it goes, then that's as far as it goes. And then release, let's pause for a moment, shifting to the other side. So just rotate across and do the other side. So we're in this sort of warrior two position in the legs here. Left leg is deeply bent. Let's do the other side with the arm. So extend it straight up and alongside the ear. So just that in and of itself, right? There's a lift that has to happen from underneath the armpit. And then sweeping the other arm back, like you're having these two, 90, these two arms in this perpendicular position, 90 degree angle. And then we'll take that back arm around to reach for the flesh of the arm. Hook your hand on the flesh of the arm and then just press that left arm down as much as it will go, right? Even if it's just a teeny tiny bit. And then release the tension and then pivot so that all 10 toes are facing the same direction. So hips, knees, and toes facing the same direction. And then I want you to put your hands onto the floor and just pause here, let the head and neck drop. All right, so let the shoulders round forward, put your hands onto the ground. Now, it does not matter if your knees are bent or straight. Again, the, what does matter is that your head is dropping down. So let gravity gently tug the back of the neck longer here. And then slowly, mindfully, take the knees all the way to the ground. And let's start rolling these shoulders. Okay, so we're gonna use Little Miss Naughty to start the small purple ball. And this guy, this uh, ball is gonna go onto the right shoulder blade. And then we're gonna come down for a really deep uh, tricep stretch. So what it's gonna look like is this. I'll show you and then you can go into it, unless of course you already know it, in which case you go into it with me. So the fingers, so we're not holding the ball with the palm, we're rolling the ball down so that you're barely holding onto it with your fingertips. And then when you come down onto the floor, you'll have your knees bent, feet on the ground, and you'll lower down so that as soon as you come down, your fingers, uh, your elbows up to the sky and your fingers are sort of just barely on the ball. Now we'll lift the hips and slide that out right elbow back to the ground so now that right elbow is not up into the air, it's alongside your ear. And then I'll have you drop your hips down. Now, this is a really important moment to see if this is a, the right amount of intensity for you. If this is not the right amount of intensity, number one, you can drop the knees over to the left a little bit if it, to take out some of the intensity. And number two, you could take that bigger purple ball and put it underneath your hips for some support. So you have a little lift in your hips. Otherwise, you're continuing to lengthen that right elbow toward the ground instead of up and in, in, into the air. Fingertips are being squished a little bit, but it shouldn't hurt because we have this really squishy ball. Couple more breaths here, thinking about that lengthening happening from the entire right side. If you wanted to get fancy with it, you can straighten your right leg too. Press your right heel away from you. All right, so you only take it as deep as you can, right? This is definitely all levels, so only do as much as feels right. And then let's unwind everything, all the gear out of the way. Lay completely flat. Pause for a moment on your back, just like you're gonna set up for a nap. Close your eyes and let the right shoulder fall toward the ground. And then open and close your jaw. Do you notice a difference in the right side of the jaw and neck? You can even take a moment to nod and shake the head a little bit. And just notice that difference in the right side. And then before we do the other side, let's sweep the arms up and alongside the ears. So reaching the arms long, see if you notice a difference Right arm versus left. Is it easier to reach and extend the right arm straighter? And then release. Let's come on up and do the other side. Good, good. So we'll take this guy to the back of the left shoulder blade. And again, if you already know it, go into it. Otherwise, I'll go nice and slow and talk you through it. 
So instead of holding on to the ball with the left palm, we're actually gonna slide the ball down your shoulder blade till your fingers are barely holding on to it. And then from there, we'll come to the back with knees bent, feet on the floor. Having that small or that bigger purple ball handy in case you need it for your hips. Now, you're just set up with the elbow up to the sky, right? And then you'll lift your hips and slide the ball under you more. Yes, it's squishing your fingers, but it shouldn't hurt because you have that squishy ball there. So like the elbow is pinning down toward the ground and your tricep is long. And then you can take that bigger purple ball underneath your hips for some nice support, or you can just angle the knees to the right. Or of course, if you feel like this is just enough of a stretch and you wanna keep the full weight of your body over it, both knees will angle straight up into the air. Breathe into your belly. Feel that lengthening sensation in the left shoulder. And if you'd like to extend the left leg for a little extra opening through the whole side body, right? So remember, we're not just stretching one thing here. The fascial line all the way from the heel to the shoulder is getting a long stretch when you reach the leg out. And then go ahead and take everything out from underneath you. Just as little movement as possible to slide these balls out of the way. And then lay on your back. Both shoulders now heavy. And then go ahead and open and close the jaw. Rotate the neck a little bit. Do you feel a difference there? A little bit more ease in the mobility. And let's stretch the arms up and alongside the ears once again, reaching the arms long. Feeling that extension of the spine. Notice, does the neck want to kick in here or can you allow the stretch to happen from your side waist to your armpits up through your fingers? So getting the side edges of the arms to do the work as opposed to the spot where the neck and shoulders meet. And then roll on over. Let's press up once again into our downward facing dog. Notice that feeling of extension from that good work you just did. So spread your fingers, tuck your toes, lift your hips. And then just notice, is it easier to lengthen through your sides? Is it easier to plug into the hands, the shoulders? Find your breath as if you can breathe long through your spine. Walk your feet to hands, hands to feet, however it works better for you, and keep the knees generously bent. Fingers are on the floor so the head can drop, almost like you're gonna dive into a pool of water, right? Really let the head be heavy and dangle for a moment. Bending the knees deeply, come up slowly to stand. Pause for a moment, we were upside down for a bit. So just pause, let the head drop forward. And then as you lift the head, roll the shoulders back. And again, notice that buoyancy of the head right over the shoulders. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back into our long stance and check out the shoulder range of motion now. So we'll pivot the right toes out and bend the right knee deeply. All right, so first, just straighten the right arm up. And then let's take a moment to find that outer hip, right? So put your hand right here at the right hip. And then I want you to think about the right arm stretching up and away from that spot, right? So almost the extension that we did uh, just a moment ago, right? Really taking full advantage of that reach. And then put the other arm out, right? So take advantage of that reach, that extension, that length. Reaching up, maybe you can get your neck involved now, look up to your hand. And then let's take that back arm, sweep it around, see if you can hold on to a spot on your right arm, that front arm, and then press the arm away from you. Think about lengthening it straight out. Take a breath here. 
and then just release. Pause for a moment, straighten the leg, and let's do the other side. So pivot around, deep into the knee. Okay, so top arm goes straight up and find that reach and extension. So meaning even if you don't get the whole kit and caboodle with that other arm, at least find the lift from the hip, the front of that left hip, all the way up into the armpit. So important for shoulder function and mobility, right? And then go ahead and take the other arm straight back. Take a moment to look up to your left fingers, get that feeling of reach from the armpit. And then sweep the back arm around, cross it behind your head, grabbing onto the flesh of your upper arm. And then maybe, just maybe, ask that left arm to reach forward, just like your back arm was a moment ago, right? So deep breath. And then release. Pivot all 10 toes straight ahead. Bend the knees so that you can take your hand down, your hands down, and tuck your chin to your chest strongly. So I want you to feel the back of the neck really dipping forward here, right? The back of the neck and head lengthening as you drop the weight of the head forward. Taking a few moments here to allow gravity to help release any tension in the shoulders. And then come down nice and slow. Okay, back onto your knees. We're gonna come onto the elbows here. So hands and knees position right about where your hands are, where your wrists are. We're gonna lay the elbows there. So we're on our forearms. Okay, now press straight down in the hands and, and the elbows. So get your forearms to squish the ground. Take a moment to feel the texture and temperature of the yoga mat underneath your forearms. And then from here, we'll tuck the toes under, straighten the legs. Now, you can keep the knees slightly bent, but either way, walk your toes toward your nose. So walk your feet forward toward your elbows. And then really press straight down in the shoulders. Maybe, just maybe, you can start to work the legs straightish. Continue to press the ground with your shoulders. Imagine at this point that your elbows have grown roots. We're only here for a couple more breaths. This is super great to build that strength for your shoulders. So just stay with it. One more round of breath. Lower down to your knees. We're gonna stretch out into puppy pose. So arms will extend. Chest and forehead dips to the ground. Pause here and notice your breath. and then come up slowly. Let's come onto our fists and put your thumbs forward. So you have these little kickstands right down to the ground, right? Now round your back, tuck your chin to your chest, and when you do that, press your fists down and apart as if with the strength of the hands you could rip the yoga mat in two. And then drop the chest, look forward. Let's go do it again. Exhale, linger in this shape where the, the upper back is rounding and chin is tucking to chest. And then go forward, last one. Exhale to round, holding that. And then inhale, lengthen. Let's plant the palms down, last downward facing dog, stretch it all out. Go ahead and nod and shake your head. See if you notice a difference in this down dog. Okie dokie, lower down to your knees. All right, we're gonna come onto our back with little Miss Naughty in between shoulder blades. So when we come down, we're actually gonna be doing a twist on one side. So you're not actually gonna be changing the location of the ball even though you're gonna do one set at a time. I'll walk you through it, don't worry about it. 
So we'll take this ball in between shoulder blades, right? So it's pretty high up, not on the back of your neck, but not in the middle of your back. It's in between the shoulder blades on the upper back there. And then from there, we'll bend knees, feet onto the floor. Okay, so we're right off the bat here. If it's too intense, go ahead and take a moment to grab a blanket or a towel so that you have something in between you and the ball, right? So kind of pad the ball a little bit. And then we'll take the arms nice and wide, right? Like you're gonna reach across the room with your arms. Okay, now if you can, start to drop the chin. So when you drop the chin, notice how you're asking the upper back and the neck to lengthen. So keep dropping the chin a little bit so that you have that feeling of the upper back and the back of the neck lengthening and supposed to contracting. And then just spill both knees over to the left. So we're taking that twist. And yes, even though you're on the ball in the center, it kind of rocked you over to the left side, right? So now you're gonna look across the right shoulder and see if you can stretch the right pec a little bit more so that the right chest is stretching as you gaze across the right side. And then sweep your chin gently down toward your chest and rotate your neck other way, but don't change anything else. So just rotate the head away from the extended arm that has the ball, that right side. And then back through center, and then pause for a moment and settle in. Again, find that spot, that spot in between the shoulder blades, right? If your shoulders need a little break, you can bend the elbows for a moment and just hang out. And then when you're ready, find that extension again. So arms reach apart into that T position. And then just let both knees tilt over to the right, stacking the knees up. Gaze over the left shoulder and see if you can find that nice deep stretch in the left front pec, right? The shoulder and chest. Gazing across the arm. And then sweep your chin down toward your chest and look across the right arm. So we're rotating the neck away from that left shoulder. Even more extension through that left pec. And then once again, roll through center. This time though, both arms are gonna reach up and over your head. So roll the ball just a tiny bit higher. Stretch your arms up and over your head, stretch your legs out. So let everything get long here. And then move that ball out of the way. Pause for a moment on your back. So just as little movement as possible to move the ball out of the way. Lay on your back. Notice the breath. Notice the feeling of ease in the back of the shoulders. Rotate your neck very slowly left and right and see if you notice a little release of tension there in the sides of your neck. Now we're gonna get really jazzed up in that spot we just rolled. So we're gonna take a bridge pose and we're gonna squeeze shoulders while we're up there. So bend your knees, feet onto the floor. Grab onto the side edges of the mat, lift your hips, and squeeze your shoulders and upper back strongly. And then lower down, and just pause here on your back. We're gonna come back up in a moment, but first, just notice what it feels like to have your low back supported for a moment. All right, so we're gonna go back up to a bridge pose and I have a, another variation for you, okay? So instead of just 
grabbing the side edges of the mat. I want to see if you can st stamp or stomp on your fingers with your heels. So what do I mean by that? Rotate the palms to face up, drag the feet a little closer in. Now I like to do this one set at a time. I'm going to slide my right hand underneath my right heel without pitching my knee too far forward. So my knee's straight up into the air and I'm just going to press straight down gently, of course, with my um, heel into my fingers and then do the same thing other side. So stuff your left hand under too. Now, when I say the knee's not too far forward, I want you to think about picking up your hips straight up into the air as opposed to lengthening your knees away from you. And when you do that, you're gonna notice a deeper stretch for your upper back and shoulders. Only go as far as feels right. So this is super important to pay attention to the limit, right? So you just go into a spot where, you know, where you stop, where do you stop? And then from there, breathe, and you can soften slightly away from it, or use your breath to puff toward sensation, right? So you kind of play around with that place of sensation so that it feels right and good. And then very slowly release. Take your feet together, knees apart, and just reach your arms up and alongside the ears and let the upper back settle, let the shoulders settle. Find a sense of ease here. Taking your time to heel toe your feet so that they're hip width distance apart. Pause for a moment on your back. And then from here, we're gonna place the big ball underneath your lower back, just for like a little supported back bend, right? So you feel how when the hips are lifted higher than the shoulders, that it's really easy to plug the shoulders back and down. Okay, so this is a really nice way to end the session with a supported back bend. If you happen to feel really energized and jazzed today, we can take a wheel pose. So your shoulders should have a little bit more extension from the work we did, right? In which, if that's the case, you're gonna take that ball out of the way and you're gonna take your hands alongside the ears. Otherwise, you stay with the ball underneath you for that supported back bend. When you're ready, let's press straight up and work the arms straight. Come all the way down when you're ready. Take the ball out of the way if that's the back bend that you chose. And then just release, extend the legs, let the arms float down by your sides, palms face up. And just notice the sense of ease and grounding from the back of the skull, the back of the shoulders, the back of the hips, back of the legs, the back of the heels. Notice that sense of clarity and calm when you find an easy breath. Check in, is there any more tension in the face and in the jaw that you can let go of? Take the deepest breath you've had all day as you sweep your arms up and alongside the ears. Let it be a nice, easy, gentle movement. And then roll to the side as you press up to a seat. Pausing again in this upright seated position. Let the elbows dangle at your sides. 
then draw hands to heart center. Send your body a much deserved message of gratitude. Thank it for its strength, for its ingenious design, and for carrying you through each and every day. Bow to the beauty and divinity within you. Namaste. Awesome, you guys. Thank you for joining me.